The invention of the Internet changed, well, pretty much everything. Every industry found a way to get online and provide ease of access to their audience. As great as it is that you can buy things from across the country or learn something new in a click that would take hours of research at the library, there are some less reputable industries that capitalize off the Internet and off of young and impressionable people. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Hello. Yes. Mm-hmm. No. Yes, and that includes sound effects. Just a heads up, this episode contains content that is not appropriate for our younger listeners. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a girl who, with what seemed like one click, fell headfirst into the online industry of pornography. Shame gripped her heart, and she did everything in her power to hide. Yet we'll see just who brought that shame into the light on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. The true story of a girl we're calling Leslie. You've been quiet since we left church, Leslie. What's wrong? Where did he go, Mom? Who, honey? Pastor Marty? They said he's gone, and he's not coming back, Mom. Why? Oh, honey. He's not coming back because he passed away this week. But he wasn't old. How could he die? It's true. He wasn't old. But his body gave out. He was too sick to get better. But where did he go? Well, his spirit went to heaven. A wonderful place to be when you die. How do you know it's wonderful? Because heaven is where Jesus is. So, Pastor Marty is with Jesus? Leslie, sweetie, stop worrying about this. You're only six. But I really need to know. Please, Mom! All right, Leslie. We'll talk about it later. Promise? Promise. As soon as we get home, I need to know about heaven right now. Just in case. In case what? In case I die too. Since the internet has made its way into almost every home today, it's inevitable that people of all ages have been affected by the internet screen times that can lead to unhealthy habits. In today's story, Leslie's screen time and what she saw there would become the greatest challenge of her young life. But could she find an influence strong enough to keep her from losing herself in the dark pit of addiction? Find out in this true story of a young woman we're calling Leslie, right now on Unshackled. When I was six years old, I was determined to receive Jesus as my savior, mostly because I wanted to go to heaven just like Pastor Marty. What I didn't know then was that becoming a believer in Jesus is one thing, but living out your faith in the real world with its problems and temptations is quite another. Growing up, it always surprised me that other families could have very different ideas about religion, and they didn't always appreciate what I was so eager to share. Hey, Marsha, look what I got. Whoa, lots of little books. Want one? What are they about? Jesus. No, thanks. I know that story. Let's go swing, Leslie. No, I really need to give these out. Hmm. Try Brian. His church is different than ours. Brian, you want a book about Jesus? Uh, Jesus? No, I'm not allowed. Why not? Don't you want to go to heaven someday? I don't believe in heaven or Jesus either. What? Are you kidding me? No, nope. give it to someone else. But Brian... What'll happen to you if you die? Brian, wait! He doesn't care. He will when he's dead. Come on, I'm gonna put one in his backpack. <laughs> I didn't know that giving a friend a book on Christianity would create such a problem. But when Brian found that book, I got into a lot of trouble at school. 
By the time I was nine, I better understood different religions and that their beliefs were not always the same as mine. But I was also pretty sure each one of those belief systems included rules to live by. So I was both confused and upset when boys from my own church tricked me to something I never expected and would become a burden for the rest of my life. Whoa, look at these. Whoa. Look at this one, Tommy. Holy, holy smokes. Almost no clothes. Almost? Look at this one. Whoa. Oh, man. Wow, right? Hey, Joey, there's Leslie. Wonder if she ever saw it. You know. <laughs> hey, let's ask her. Hey, Leslie, want to see my new toy? What is it? Kind of like a kaleidoscope. You ever seen one? Here, hold it up to your eyes. Yeah, look into this little hole. <laughs> You'll love it. Really? I don't know. Go on, try it. Just look into it and focus. OK. Let me see. <gasps> what? <laughs> Uh, ain't you ever seen a man before? Not that way! You're awful! Both of you! And I hope you burn in hell for this! <laughs> I'd never seen pornographic pictures, and it angered me to be tricked. But though I knew it wasn't right, the graphic image I saw that day fascinated me. I told myself it was just natural curiosity. But I knew it was more than that when I couldn't get it out of my mind and began to secretly search for ways I could see pictures like those again. Then, just as middle school started, I stumbled on the perfect solution, one that no one would ever know about. It was my first introduction into what would become a full-fledged addiction. Nailed it, Leslie! Yep, killed it. Hey. You're doing virtual school now, right? Uh-huh. Wow, girl. Home alone all day? Just me, my computer, and the internet. Hmm. Bet you can find lots of fun things to do to pass the time. I guess. So? No parents and a computer? Yeah? So? So? No one knows what kind of stuff you're watching, you know? Like what? Like X-rated movies. Sexy stuff. Girl, you got it made. Never really thought about it. <laughs> I know what I'd be watching if I was all alone like that. There it was. The answer I wanted was right in front of me. My computer and the internet. The perfect way to indulge my new obsession. I'd already begun using my friend's bad language at school. Though I felt dirty and ashamed, especially sitting in church like the perfect Christian. But it had become easy to ignore my faith as something I needed on Sundays only. And I learned to play the game well enough that my parents didn't suspect. Eventually, so much time alone opened up a world of explicit possibilities as I gave in to those pornographic sites. As their hold on me increased, I didn't realize I was in so deep until it finally caught up with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I like talking to you. You're not um, held back by your parents. They think I'm the perfect teen. They don't have a clue about my life. <laughs> Got them fooled, huh? For years now. Oh, yeah? So how smart are you? Like, really? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> smart enough not to give a stranger on a phone my real name. <laughs> but you, uh, you like looking at them pictures I've been sending? Uh-huh. Leslie? Who are you talking to? Who is this? Mom! Uh, just a friend from school. Oh, yeah, right. Listen, mister. You call again, I call the police. Leslie, hang up the phone and get in here now. Busted. My parents were shocked, not only by the phone call, but by my attitude and language. And when they finally checked my computer, they were concerned. Leslie, I can't believe you're involved in this, this... What, Mom? Sexy stuff? I was going to say filth. And the phone calls? What were you thinking? There's a lot about me you don't know. Apparently. And what about your Christian witness? You're giving that up too? I can still be a Christian and, and live the way I want. You think so? Show me the Bible verse that says that. Oh, please. Lots of people do it. And lots of people ruin their lives with this kind of trash. 
You've had too much freedom. Your life is about to change. As angry as I was to be found out, my teenage pride stopped me from letting my parents know I was secretly a little relieved. Though I craved the effect pornography had on me, I was old enough to recognize it as a problem, but young enough that I didn't realize the problem was called addiction. It would take something unexpected to force me into facing the truth about myself. And that was about to happen in the most unexpected place ever. Folks, we'll get back to Leslie's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 73rd year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Leslie's story. I couldn't believe what my parents planned to put me through next. Talk about unexpected. Church youth camp, the absolute last place on earth I wanted to be, especially with my bad attitude. I agreed to go just to stay under the parent radar but the whole time, I was counting the minutes until I could get back to those powerful images I had stashed on my computer. I never saw it as an addiction, so I didn't expect to be caught by my own secrets until one of Pastor Jeff's nightly teen talk sermons hit a little too close to home. Hey, okay, settle down. I have a serious topic to share tonight. So, everybody pay attention. Great. What are we in for now? Sermon on drinking? Or maybe our scandalous language? <laughs> Not all sexual desire is lust. God made sexual desire. But lust is sexual desire gone wrong. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about porn. Now, I would stake my life on the assumption that no one in this room is absolutely addicted to pornography or any sexual sin. What I mean is this. If the stakes are high enough and sure enough, you will have all the self-control you need to resist any sexual temptation. Wait, sexual did he just say porn? Uh, porn? uh, yeah, I think he did. Who cares? That's mostly a guy thing. Girl, speak for yourself. What? Right. Uh, Definitely not a problem for us gals. Uh-huh, says little Miss Innocent. It's not. Anyway, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Come in, Leslie. Much as I wanted to sneak out with them, for some reason I stayed where I was, riveted to what Pastor Jeff was saying. When he described pornography addiction and its hold on people through the easy access of the internet, it sounded just like me. Though he seemed to be talking mostly to the boys, I saw myself in every word of that sermon and it scared me. Enough to seek out Pastor Jeff at breakfast the next morning. Hey Leslie, I see you got the donuts instead of scrambled eggs. Good choice. Thanks. Uh, Pastor, can I talk to you? Sure. Can I talk to you maybe over there where it's quieter? Yep, and farther away from my wife so she won't notice how many donuts I'm eating. <laughs> Seriously, don't tell her. Pastor Jeff, about last night, um, all those things you said were mainly for the boys, right? Well, um, we often think of it as a boy's problem, but the truth is, 
Anyone can be caught up in the temptation to watch pornography. And when it's really bad, it can become an addiction. Addiction? How does someone know if, uh, if they're addicted to something like that? People who are addicted to porn can't control their impulses to seek it out. Sexual temptation, lust, can occupy their every thought. So, even girls? Anybody. Wow. Can a person break free from that? They can, but it takes a lot of work. And the help of someone greater. Like a counselor? Sure, but I was thinking of an even greater power. Oh, you mean like Jesus? Exactly. As Christians, we have God's word to guide us, give us strength when we're tempted. You know that, Leslie. The Bible says, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah, but saying it and doing it, that's harder than you might think. Uh, I get it. <sighs> Look, it begins with confession. First to the Lord. Did that. Over and over. I just can't stop. I see. Addiction can be a scary thing. Especially if you're trying to handle it alone. Maybe you could discuss it with your parents? No! Not a chance! Okay, okay. How about my wife, Carol? She's easy to talk to. Maybe you could come by our house this week. Uh, I don't know. Might help. Would she have to tell my parents? <sighs> Let's just take it one step at a time, okay? Come by, and if you want to talk, Carol will listen. Addiction. That word convinced me I needed help. After all, I had been in church, like, forever. But here I was, a teenager with a porn addiction. It terrified me. My parents were already controlling and watchful since the incident with the phone calls. I wasn't sure what they would do if they found out the truth especially since we were fighting half the time. And confession is a hard thing to do, especially with those you know best. So I followed through with my pastor's suggestion of meeting with his wife, Carol, to whom I confessed everything. Well, thank you for sharing, Leslie. That must have taken some courage. I hope you understand. I didn't realize at first that this problem is an addiction. Have you told anyone else? No, just your husband. Leslie, if I were in your shoes, I would keep this to myself. Don't talk about it. Really? Why? Because people make judgments, and it will change their opinion of you. But isn't it good for addicts to confess? True. But when it concerns pornography, you're young, and you're a girl. Pastor Jeff said people of all ages can be caught in addictions. But people will judge you for that. I'm most worried about God's judgment. Oh, Leslie, you're carrying a lot of guilt. Give it to God and just keep quiet about it. You're better off that way. I didn't know what to do with that. Her response confused me, and I felt more ashamed, even angry. I wanted her to do something about it. But what could she do? She couldn't absolve me. Only Jesus could do that. And he had already cleansed me of my sin when he saved me. So why was I doing this? Why wouldn't I stop? Deep down, I knew. The devil had a stronghold on me in my lust, and he was fighting like mad to keep me trapped there in despair and self-loathing. He wanted to keep me down in despondency and covered in the grime of guilt and shame, fearful and powerless. And the only chance I had to overcome was through the transforming power of Jesus Christ. This awakening was driven home by a pastor's sermon at the youth camp. I felt like he was talking to me, or God was through him. So no matter your sin, be it greed, wrath, pride, lust, whatever foothold Satan is using to destroy you, just remember that Jesus came to this world in order to break the back of all sin, death, and the devil. Jesus came and he died and he rose again in order to make all things new, in order to restore men and women to their original glory, in order to wash them clean and make them stand up tall, clothed in his righteousness. 
to give them the power to hate and even kill their sin. Yes, I said hate and kill your sin. What are you doing to hate and kill your sin, friends? What is keeping you from walking in the freedom of repentance? That was it. I was shackled by my sin. I then understood that I must hate and kill my sin if I ever wanted to walk in that freedom. So I began with the act of plucking out my eyes because they offended me. Well, sort of. Leslie? Mom! What are you doing out here in this cold garage? I'm... uh... getting rid of something. What are you... Wait, is that your computer? If it's not in my room, I won't be tempted by it. Tempted? What are you talking about? It's just... distracting. Leslie, I'm proud of the changes you've made since youth camp. But is there more going on here than you've told us? Yeah. Mom, I've been hiding something from you and Dad. And I'm ready to come clean. I finally faced the truth that night. Confessing to my parents and trusting in God's forgiveness. It was amazing how clean I felt. From then on, I kept my Bible closer than my computer for those times when I might be tempted to give in and search the internet. I felt like I was given a fresh start, but I knew my biggest challenge would be returning to school where my bad language and attitude was well known. I was glad when Pastor Jeff paved the way for me at our next team meeting at the church. I didn't know when I stood up to speak that night that it would be a new beginning for me. A chance to help others learning to handle even their strongest addictions by believing in the power of Jesus. Yeah. All right, all right, gather around now. Now, usually you get to hear me talk at our team meetings, but I've asked one of our own members to share something important she's been going through, and I want you to listen carefully. What she's doing requires courage. Thanks, Pastor Jeff. You guys are probably wondering why I'm up here speaking, since you all know me as the girl who's had an attitude worse than any of you. Mm, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe what I've gone through will help someone else who is struggling. You see, I have an addiction, and it's not to alcohol or drugs, but something a lot harder to deal with, because it's so easy to find and so easy to hide. Pornography tore apart my relationships with friends, family, and most importantly, my relationship with Christ. It's taken me a long time to admit it, and it's an ongoing struggle to overcome it, but I've learned the hard way that worldly things will always let you down. The only thing you can count on is Jesus. I spoke from my heart that day and I expected teasing from some of the group afterwards. But I never expected the reaction that came from Marsha at our next game. Hey, Leslie, um, can we talk? Sure. So, like, did you really mean all those things you said at the team meeting? I did. You know, I remember when we were in Sunday school together and learned all those verses. But Marsha, they were just words until I decided to really trust in Jesus and live them out. Like James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I never thought of it that way. Look, I don't know what you might be struggling with, but I know God will help you when you confess and choose to trust him. You seem so sure. I am. Now. And Marsha, take it from me. There's nothing like the feeling of being clean. Trusting Jesus gave me that. So, you think it would work for me? The world will always disappoint you. But Jesus, Jesus will set you free. Listening friend, 
The young woman in our story learned to overcome her addiction because of the strength she found when her life was firmly committed to trusting Jesus Christ. Have you found the strength you need for your life by placing your trust in Jesus? And if you've never put your trust in Christ, why not do so now? No matter what has control of your life, when you trust Christ, He gives you the strength you need for a fresh start. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you need help in this crucial decision, get in touch with us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled In Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the new prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is 2 Chronicles 16.9. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. This plaque is gorgeous. It's contrasting chestnut brown outer ring and the light brown inner ring of the bark truly shows the diversity of God's creation. If you'd like a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. The deadline to enter is September 2nd. And next time... You're gonna wake up Johnny. You need to stop this fight right now. Why should I? Stop hitting me! What's the matter, tough guy? You scared of me? Only when you drink too much. Every time you drink, you get crazy. Oh, yeah? You want to see crazy? Dad? Go, go, go back to bed, Johnny. Why do you have to fight all the time? Johnny Brandemill grew up in a troubled home filled with alcohol and abuse. The next few days were quiet until the drinking started again. More holes punched in the walls and more doors ripped off their hinges. After he moves out, he falls into a drug addiction that threatens his marriage and his life. What do you want, Veronica? Your son found your dope stash in the closet. What kind of a dad are you? I'm the one paying all the bills, so lay off me. You need to come home right now or you won't have a family. Don't miss part one of the true testimony of Johnny Brandemill, all on the next Unshackled. Heard in Leslie's true story were Jennifer Dimmitt, Amanda Markeski, Shaz Campbell, Brian Plaharchik, and Mara Kate Burns. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects and audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Sound assistant, Jory Carl Ochoa. Script, Karen Knight. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.